What is up, everybody? It's Mining Office. I hope you're having a good day. I sure am. And uh, I got in my server power supply. So, uh, yeah, you can see uh, the server PSUs here. I have uh, the breakout board, some cables in there. And uh, this stuff I think I showed in one of my other videos. But I have an extra breakout board and power cables here. So, uh, yeah, some splitters and uh, the C13 power cable. Um, so I figured I'll take advantage of the situation and uh, compare ATX power supplies to the trusty server power supplies, which uh, here I also have here. I'll show you guys. So, yeah, um, at first I got two RM 850Xs, as you can see, to power, uh, to power my GPUs. And this one I just have basically the server power supply and that ATX power supply is just powering uh, the motherboard and one of the GPUs there. Um, but um, I think server power supplies are better and I'm not the only one in uh, the crypto mining community. So I'll bring all this stuff over uh, to my table and uh, we'll take a look comparing here. Um, this is probably one of the best bang for your buck uh, value and quality wise um, for ATX power supplies. So I think this is a very good comparison and uh yeah let's go all right so what i think i'll do is just basically take all this stuff out first i'll go over the comparison between uh both of these types of power supplies and then afterwards we'll go back to the office and set it up in the rig um, i think a lot of people might not care as much about setting it up in the rig and all that stuff and what it looks like after and they just want to get to the comparison so i'll make sure to put that first and you guys can skip the end uh, if you want that way uh yeah so first things first you have the server power supply this is how it comes uh, it's a hp server power supply on 110 this is uh, 900 watts and on 220 slash 240 it's 1200 watts uh platinum rated power supply so um, obviously this doesn't connect to anything uh familiar looking right that's because you need a breakout board uh, breakout board is one of these guys. This is the one it came with. Um, so this just, just slides on basically there uh, to the server power supply. You have a little voltage reading. Uh, you have an on-off switch. And uh, you have a little sync uh, switch here. Or, or plug, I should say. Uh, you can see in here too, we just have a bunch of, uh, a bunch of PCIe cables. These are six pins which go in here uh, to six plus two pins. Uh, and then you can always use splitters with them as well. And if I go into this box, you'll see we have another breakout board. This is a 17 uh, slot breakout board. So I'm actually going to use this one on this on the new server uh, power supply. And this one I'll put on my old one um, and retire the one that has a button for now. Um, and again, just some more cables. So I think here there's eight and here there's 12, something like that or eight and eight anyway. So uh, you can see I have enough equipment here. So let me get this stuff out of the way and we'll get straight to the comparison. All right, so we're gonna cover a few different categories when we put these guys head to head. Now this is nothing special, it's nothing new. It's been covered by so many other crypto YouTubers before me and they probably cover it better than me, but um, I'll still cover it quickly. We're gonna go over the capacity of these in terms of watts, um, their efficiency. We're gonna go over their price, uh, the amount of connections that are supported. Um, Two more things are going to be the noise and the heat. So those are, to me, a little bit secondary, but there'll be other points that we'll be covering. So um, I'll start by the price because that just puts everything into perspective. Uh, this one, the whole kit with one breakout board, and I think it's eight cables, uh, cost me $125 Canadian. Everything, again, is in Canadian prices. So $125 is extremely cheap for this, all right, in my opinion. Um, this, um, again... Take this into account. I got this on special. So normally it's 180 Canadian dollars plus tax. Um, this ended up being 160 Canadian dollars plus tax. Actually, I paid that price for both of my RM 850Xs. Um, so that ends up being $184. So already $184 versus $125 all in. All right. Um, that's the first thing. Now, the second thing we're going to go in is capacity. So um, you can see it. It's called RM850. It's an 850 watt power supply. All right. Um, this here is going to be a 900 watt power supply the way I'm using it. A little distracted because the cat's here. But uh, yeah, so when this is plugged into 110 volt, uh, it's going to be 900 watts. And when it's plugged into 220 slash 240, whatever, um, it's going to be 1,200 watts. So 
I mean, already if you're plugging it to 220, it blows this out of the water. And if you're plugging it into 110, it still beats it by 50 watts, right? So on that end, uh, the clear winner is the server power supply. Uh, the next thing we're gonna cover is the efficiency. So you can see here, this one is 80 plus gold rated efficiency, all right? And notice it also comes with a 10 year guarantee. That's one of the reasons why I took this power supply in particular. Um, so yeah, 80 plus gold. This is platinum. Now, a caveat here, I know it's platinum rated on 220. I'm not 100% sure on 110. I think it's the same thing, but don't take my word for it. Um, but again, here, clear winner uh, is gonna be the server power supply. Um, price, it's obviously the clear winner, so it's taking the first three categories versus the ATX power supply. Um, the next category is gonna be connections. So on this guy, you can see that, um, well, they're actually backwards here, but trust me, there is um, five PCIe connections on this slash CPU. So it's the same thing for the CPU and the PCIe, and there's five of them. So that means if you're running uh, your CPU and mobile off this, um, you're gonna have four spare connections on the PSU to power cards. And in my case, where I'm running two of these, I have nine total connections, right? Because four from the one that I'm running the CPU on and my second one that has no CPU on it can have five connections. However, note that this only comes with uh, three connections. So you see here, PCIe connectors, it says six, but it's because they're daisy chain cables. So there's only three three cables um, that has, yeah, two of these connectors on it. Thing is, if you're GPU mining, the distance between both of the, you know, six plus two pins is not long enough to make it between, you know, the, the riser and your card. So uh, these come back to being single cables at the end of the day. You can't, you can't really use the second daisy chain on it. So um, if you wanna use five, you have to buy extra cables. That can be really hard to find locally or really expensive if you order online. So I was able to find really cheap uh, and got lucky, but you might struggle to find you know, one or two more of these to, to, to max out your capacity. But the server power supply, that only depends on your breakout board. Now I've seen anywhere between, you know, 12 to 17 slot ones, like this is a 17 slot. So obviously, again, it just depends on the breakout board you get with uh, your server power supply. So um, another thing to consider though, is that look on this, I can't plug in with this current breakout board. I can't plug in my 24 pin or my uh, four, four slash six pin for the CPU, right? Uh, so I'm gonna need an ATX power supply in conjunction with the server power supply. So as a secondary PSU where you're just powering cards, this definitely wins. Um, now you have to power your CPU and motherboard as well. Uh, you have two options. Obviously you have to go with the ATX, have at least one ATX power supply per rig, or there are uh, breakout boards. I believe it's the ZX, a ZXS or something like that, Z ZXS breakout board um, that can support uh, the motherboard and CPU from the breakout board. So that's your choices. Still overall, I would say uh, server power supply, probably the winner for the versatility just based on the breakout board. Uh, now the two other categories are gonna be uh, noise and heat. In terms of noise, again, here the ATX power supply is the clear winner. Um, look at the size of the fan here and Look at that tiny puny fan there. So um, obviously this makes a lot, well, a lot more noise. I wouldn't wanna have this running in my bedroom or something like that. So again, it's not too bad at low load, but once this thing gets cranking up, uh, you know, in the higher wattage and the fan gets spinning fast, it does make quite some noise. I don't know what millimeter, you know, what size this is, but uh, anyhow. And in terms of heat, let me tell you guys something. Uh, this guy gets hot no matter what. So even on low load, as soon as it's on, this guy gets pretty hot, okay? And this one will stay cool as long as, again, it's under low load. Obviously when it's, you know, loaded higher, around 700 watts, let's say, up when it's up there, uh, it does get hot too, but not as hot as this. So again, for heat, uh, this is where the ATX power supply wins. But Overall, if you compare all the categories, when you're just powering GPUs, uh, the server power supply is gonna be the clear winner in that scenario. Um, again, it's gonna win in terms of uh, capacity, efficiency, price, and the number of connections. So again, for, for just GPUs in a rig, this is by far the clear winner. Um, 
Again, the only things you'll have to consider is the heat and the noise that this makes. So it's designed to run 24 seven, but again, it's designed to run hot and in a server, you know, room environment, uh, you wouldn't care about the noise. So those are the only two downsides to this. Um, and in which case you're going to want to go with uh, an ATX power supply. Uh, these are obviously just easier to use and more readily available. But uh, yeah, if you can get this, I just order one off eBay because it's a bit harder to get these in Canada from Parallel Miner and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, anyway, um, that's about it for the comparison. I think we went over uh, that pretty extensively. Now I'm going to jump back to the rig and uh, tell you guys what I'm going to do with this. So you guys see these 2RM 850Xs. What I'm going to do is uh, this one is plugged into the motherboard and the CPU. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to replace this one with my new server power supply with the uh, 17 uh, slot breakout board. And then this guy, I'm going to move up here and replace the bronze 850 watt power supply um, and retire that guy. So uh, yeah, uh, at the same time, what we're going to do is uh, change the breakout board here. As you see, this one just has the button. I'm going to change it for one that has a switch. I'm going to start by shutting down this bottom rig. Obviously, I have to unplug all the cards that are on this guy. Uh, rip them out, put in the server power supply, and then we're gonna make sure everything works on uh, this rig here before I start swapping it in the top here. If ever anything's not working, I wanna be able to just put this PSU back in and keep mining, obviously. So uh, yeah, let's see. All right, guys, so we're actually the next day. Um, I, had, I had issues yesterday. It took forever to get this running, so I'll explain. Uh, what first happened is obviously I, I, I plugged in just the server PSU and the breakout board with no GPUs plugged in, no wires plugged in. And when you turn on the breakout board, you would see the voltage, right? The voltage reading that you can see over on this side here. Uh, it would turn on, everything would work fine, and it's all good. So I wired up these three GPUs. Um, I turn on the server power supply and, oh, nothing happens. Uh, I mean, the... the the green light on the back would turn on for five seconds uh, and then shut off and this would not come uh, back on. So what I then did is I unplugged the 3070 and the 1080. I left just the 3060 Ti in here to see if it was an issue with maybe power or something like that. And the same thing happened. That didn't solve my problem. At that point, I was a little uh, worried, to be honest with you. I didn't know what the hell was wrong. I thought maybe uh, the breakout board was just fried itself or something. Um, what it ended up being, guys... This is the first time this has happened to me, but a bad breakout board cable. So this cable here was faulty. Um, at first, this is one of the cables that was on my 3060 Ti. So how I noticed it is then I switched cards. I said, you know what? Instead of trying the 3060 Ti, I'm gonna try the, the 1080, uh, just plug it into the breakout board and that worked. Then I said, okay, well, maybe it's a problem with the card specifically. I plugged in the 3070, that worked. I said, okay, so I plugged in one of the two wires on the 3060 Ti, it worked, and as soon as I plugged in this other wire, it didn't. This was going to the riser. So on the type uh, 007 risers, you can plug in the, the six pin there or on the side, see that? So I plugged it in both of those, okay? And I tried different slots on the breakout board with this wire and it never worked. So that's how I determined this wire was faulty. Um, and I just, you know, took another one from the big batch I have and boom, sure enough, everything was working afterwards. So I lost, uh, I mean, over an hour, maybe a few hours, uh, just debugging that. Uh, I got pretty discouraged at a certain point, but you know, you just have to go piece by piece, literally connection by connection, go through everything and uh, see why it wasn't working. So at the end of the day, I was expecting honestly the riser to be dead. But uh, yeah, it was, it was the wire. I was not expecting this. I haven't really heard of bad wires, but this definitely is a bad wire here that I got. So uh, anyhow, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been running all night. Uh, I had no problems, uh, no crashes, no nothing. Nothing caught on fire. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. And the, uh, the other PSU is, is now retired just in here. So uh, yeah, guys, that's it. Um, everything's set up, everything's running, and now I'm happy. One ATX power supply per rig and one server power supply per rig. So that's beautiful. And uh, the main reason I did this is to be able to have enough uh, power for a six card in this rig. So that'll probably be my next video. Um, until then, I'll catch you guys next time. Uh, everybody take care. And if you enjoyed this comparison, uh, please like the video and think about subscribing to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. So uh, yeah, everybody take care, have a good day and uh, I'll catch you guys next time.